Industrial growth in America was tremendous, and both black and white inventors were responsible. By 1870, the patent restraints for blacks had been lifted and signaled an explosion of inventions to come. One of those inventions was from Jan Metzeliger, a black immigrant from New Guinea who settled in Lynn, Massachusetts, the center of the shoemaking industry. Now, his invention revolutionized the shoe manufacturing industry and created thousands of jobs. Prior to Metzeliger's invention, connecting the leather uppers to the soles of the shoes was done by hand, a process called lasting. He wanted to make shoes affordable for everyone. And after working secretly at night for 10 years, Metzeliger created a lasting machine that could turn out a complete shoe. His drawings, however, were so complex, the US Patent Office couldn't believe the machine worked. So an official was sent to inspect it. And on March 20th, 1883, Jan Metzeliger was issued his first patent. Metzeliger tried unsuccessfully to market his invention himself and sold the rights to his invention for stock in a new company. He took to performing in plays, but died a forgotten inventor before he reaped any financial rewards. Metzeliger's recognition finally came a century later when a postage stamp commemorated his name and a bridge in his honor was dedicated in his hometown of Lynn, Massachusetts. With the introduction of Henry Ford's Model T, cars began to move horses aside and America shifted full speed ahead. Between 1871 and 1900, more than 300 patents were awarded for inventions and innovations by blacks. Inventors have become a part of American folklore as well. If you've ever heard the phrase, the real McCoy, mm -hmm, you know what I mean. The phrase was coined for a master inventor, Elijah McCoy, who ultimately patented over 60 lubricating systems, including an air brake system for railroads. In the late 1870s, most machines, including trains, had to be stopped every time they needed oil. The oilman would walk the length of the train and oil all the moving parts. McCoy devised a method for oiling machinery as it was running. And on June 23rd, 1872, he received a patent for the lubricating cup. McCoy believed in producing quality work. As a result, his lubricating system was used on locomotives, machinery in factories, and on engines of transatlantic steamships around the world. McCoy's system was so effective that buyers of new machinery would ask the sellers, does the equipment have the real McCoy? If it didn't, they wouldn't buy it. So if you want the genuine article, the real thing, just ask for the real McCoy. In a country that still had the feeling that the oppressed race had contributed little or nothing, African Americans began to catch the public's attention. Exhibits at the 1895 Atlanta Exposition and the 1907 Jamestown Exposition gave black inventors the opportunity to showcase their accomplishments. On the flip side, in 1896, the Supreme Court ruled in Plessy versus Ferguson that separate but equal facilities for whites and blacks was constitutional, which marked the beginning of Jim Crow laws and legalized segregation. Despite the trials and stresses of life, people enjoyed their recreational time and hobbies were springboards for inventions. Now take, for instance, dentist George Grant. He loved playing golf. And on December 12, 1899, he received a patent for an object that golfers have been using ever since. The golf tee. Before Grant's inventions, Players would form cone-shaped mounds of sand with their fingers on which the ball sat. Now today, this tooth-shaped invention has improved many a golfer's drive. 